G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. I do hope that you are super well. Today we're talking about the Young Neo or the YN 50mm 1.8 AF lens for APS-C. And here it is on a ZFC. And in Z mount, you can stick it on any of the Z mount cameras, but I suppose it goes best with a Z30, a Z50, or the ZFC. And what's crazy about this lens is right now it's as cheap as 117 US dollars. Is it for you? In this video, we're going to look at some stills. We're going to look at a lot of stills. So you might not want to look at all of them. You might want to jump through some of them during the day, during the twilight, and during the night to really see, is this an affordable option for you? Maybe to take on holidays with you with perhaps a set of a few small primes. Let's talk about the 50mm 1.8 fully AF lens. So yes, of course, you can put this lens on your full frame cameras and on a Z7, Z7 II, Z8 or Z9, you're going to get just shy of 20 megapixels. So that's fine. But I suppose if you do have a full frame camera, you may as well make the best of it. But it's still an option. At this price point, we're expecting a basic composite plastic lens hood. That's what it is. It sits on the front of the camera pretty well. Now, there is absolutely nothing to this lens. We can see here that it has no buttons. It has no extra rings. It just has a focus ring. It does have a USB-C port for upgrading at a later date. Other than that, we just have the ability to focus. That's it. This ring that's used for autofocus, it does not have a great deal of resistance. But yes, it works. Again, at this price point, my expectations aren't high. It has a 30.4 degree field of view, seven aperture blades, eight elements in seven groups. The minimum focus distance is 45 centimeters, which is around a foot and a half. And the weight of this lens is only 148 grams. It's pretty damn light absolutely makes this very easy to carry around. YN 50mm f1.8 Z DA DSM. And we're working on the ZFC firmware version 1.60. Just getting the graffiti showing the relative sharpness. And I do think this lens is pretty sharp. Just keep in mind, we are only working with 20 megapixels. And we're at 100% here. We can see yeah, it looks that is sharp in the middle at 100%. We are able to see that we can get depth of field, obviously 75 mil field of view equivalent when on APS-C samples of green fringing in this case with a little tiny bit of purple, both in the outer focus areas in the background and a little bit here in the focus areas. It's interesting how this manifests and it's hard to know exactly when fringing is going to manifest in with this particular lens, it's not always to do with harsh light or harsh anything, really. But in a way, I don't mind the character. And it is a very reminiscent to me of many DSLR lenses that I had a decade or two ago. The fall off, the depth of field that we can achieve. We are at 1.8 and this works as an art street lens. I think just really good accurate color rendition from my perspective taking a quick look at distortion I think there's a very slight amount but of course that's easy to correct look at the verticals on the left and right how does it handle directly into the Sun there is an aperture I think we're looking at f16 here and that's the Sun stars I don't mind that that looks fine a little bit of a flare that we can see in the top of frame Again, sharpness and even away from the middle, we are on a 4K screen, so we can't zoom very much, but we're now pixel for pixel. And it continues to be pretty sharp. We are wide open at 1.8. So I do think this lens is sharp and I think it's relatively sharp, perhaps not all the way to the corners, but enough considering the price point. Looking in the corners, we can see that wide open, there is a very small amount of vignetting, but again, so easy to fix. It's handling the light, the contrast, relatively sharp. There's pixel for pixel, and I think that's a fine enough result with very slight indication of 
fringing. Very minimal here. That's because that's only slightly out of focus. Fringing does not seem to be as much of an issue for in focus areas. Now we can see a very small amount of purple in there, but if we go to 100%, it's really not distracting us very much considering how harsh that is. Direct sunlight bouncing off a piece of glass, so it's pretty similar. I'm actually pretty impressed by that result considering the cost of this lens. Directly into the sun, and that is suppressing flare in this particular instance, and it can change depending on where the sun is in the frame, the top, the bottom, the exact middle, etc. But I reckon that's actually a pretty clean result. Definitely my favourite shot from this session, just showing depth of field with the 50mm 1.8. We are at 1.8 with the shutter at a maximum, the maximum for this camera, which is one four thousandth, at our minimum ISO of 100. Without adding ND filters, this is pushing the relationship with this lens in full daylight. This is pushing it as hard as we can. It's not always that easy to use this lens wide open, even with the shutter at its fastest, because there's just too much light. So something to consider is you might need an ND filter if you like doing what I'm doing, which is shooting a lot of short depth of field in bright sunlight. Fringing here on the side of the building, I don't think it's distracting. I think it's fine. I think it works. And I love this image. Now, I kept this image in not because I like the image. I don't like the image, but it, it is showing the purple fringing at its worst. Obviously, the sun is directly behind all of these objects and it's absolutely out of control in this photo. What's interesting about the difference between these two files, as you get all of those masts more into focus, which they are here, the fringing goes away. I think the focus in the first image is actually on the buildings and the bridge behind. So we get more fringing when the lens is out of focus. A lot of detail, looks absolutely solid. Sun just slightly masked there by the bridge, right on, right on the edge of it. Are we getting enough detail? That's 100%. I think so. I just have to remind you, 119 US dollars. This is really a big night out. Go to dinner, two people go to dinner and a movie, buy a popcorn and a drink. This lens is probably cheaper than that and I think is performing pretty well. What we're probably seeing here, the softness, this is probably actually atmospheric. What I've found with the S-Class lenses is their capacity to cut through the atmosphere is highly enhanced compared to a standard lens. So I think that's probably more that is just atmospheric softening of the image rather than actual sharpness. Nowadays, we've got 4K screens. We're used to 45 megapixels or more. 20 megapixels doesn't necessarily feel like a lot. Illustrating depth of field, the fishermen are in focus. The background is soft. This probably proves my point. We're at a bit of a different angle here. The light is not behind me anymore. The light, the sun is actually uh, to my left. And I think we're seeing less of the atmosphere being picked up by the rays and this appears to be a sharper and cleaner image. Absolutely before it was about cutting through the atmospheric haze. And yes, this is sharp. Looking at depth of field and fringing, I do think this lens has great depth of field. We've got the grass in the foreground absolutely in focus. Obviously, the palm tree is out of focus. So you can totally get these sorts of images and get yourself absolutely a super soft background. And I do think the background does look very creamy. It's very soft. So it's got lovely out of focus areas. But if you decide to get backlight like I have here, then obviously we've got really strong green fringing in this image. And that would certainly be distracting to some people. So something to think about there. If you love this type of image, you might find this too distracting. Now, of course, one way around this to solve it is you can go black and white. I'm even closer to the grass in this one and the lens elements have changed again. And even so, there is still green fringing here. It is nowhere near as prominent. So it seems absolutely to do with focus and how how out of focus the background is. Where is it in its out of focusness? And in this case, I actually think this is quite a pleasant result. So what we're seeing here is lovely soft background bokeh. We're also seeing a flare, which I think is fine. That level of flare is fine. And fringing is minimized slash controlled enough to make this sort of level acceptable. This time the tree's in focus. Foreground looks great. 
the deep background is soft which is fine I really like this sort of frame the flare I can accept and you could remove that if you wanted to interestingly we still have plenty of green fringing both here in the almost in focus areas not quite these are slightly out of focus I think but also we can see in the deep out of focus areas back here all of those previous images were at 1.8 now we are at 5.6 and this is what I want to show you about this lens we are still getting short depth of field absolutely the foreground is out of focus looking pretty good the tree is looking great but just observe how we've completely removed all signs of green fringing slightest amount of purple fringing tiny amount but I think very acceptable this is actually a really usable and great result. Remember, you don't have to shoot these lenses wide open all the time, like I seem to like to do. You can go from 1.8 to 2 to 2.8 to 4, and here we are at 5.6. This is a really solid result. 5.6 aperture, we can still get short depth of field. The grass is in focus in the foreground. The tree is out of focus in the background. And in this case, we have removed fringing almost 100%. This lens, you can work out how to work with it. It's just up to you whether you want to experiment. We are looking directly into the sun. So flare is controlled really well. Depth of field and bokeh is great. I think this is actually working. 5.6. This is f7.1. And at this point in time, we are really removing all signs of fringing. Absolutely completely removed we're still getting a slight flare we are looking straight into the sun but that level of flare is great that is really suppressed and thus stopping this lens down really does give you a great result quite wow and quite sharp a little selection of images people running into the water splash there we go but i love how this is being handled i love how this looks we are at 100 percent this is a pretty harsh situation for any lens and I think it's handling it pretty well. Now, this flare that's coming through here, I'd been out shooting for a couple of hours at this point in time. It's hard to say whether that is some sort of buildup on the lens or is that a flare? I'm not sure. I think it's probably a flare as the sun is getting really low in the sky. The sun is now set. I'm heading back towards the city. I do think this is handling this twilight really well. Those colors are great and this is looking nice and sharp. We are now at one and one hundredth of a second at f 1.8 just wanted to look at the relative sharpness here the bokeh in the background the fall off it's a nice rendition good colors again we start to see a little bit of the green fringing and that's something that you'll have to decide whether you want to shoot it at 1.8 whether that bothers you we are still at 100 iso one one hundredth of a second, f1.8. We're getting clear depth of field here with the buildings in the background. Nice and sharp. We're handheld. Let's not forget that the ZFC does not have in-body image stabilization, and this lens also does not have in-body image stabilization. In-body image stabilization is something that I have become very, very used to because we've had it ever since the Z6, so that's now five or six years. And as we get into lower light, you just simply can't just keep dropping your shutter speeds lower. It's not it's not possible to do without stability, a tripod and, the, and such. Something I want you to note here is we are getting purple fringing around this light, but at standard viewing distance, totally fine. This guy was coming towards me at about 25 kilometers per hour. The ZFC in the dark was able to focus on him. No problem face recognition. We're now getting into nighttime territory. Our ISO has gone up to 800. We are 1 40th of a second, 1.8. I think this is handheld. Remember, this is 75 millimeters field of view equivalent. For me, getting much slower than this start to get difficult maybe around 125th is going to be the limit as a tourist lens you have to start to crank up your isos 800 is still fine you might get away with 1600 here's a cafe at night at iso 800 oh, i think this looks really great that, that's quite a, a lovely rendition the art center spire we are at iso 800 one sixtieth of a second 1.8 this turned out great this is actually a really good nightscape 
ISO 400, 150th of a second, f1.8. A great result handheld at night with this lens. Pretty good results. I mean, look, I'm used to working with the 50mm 1.2, the 85mm 1.2, and the Pleno 1.8. Outstanding lenses. This is not at that level, but it's not at the price. It's like 20 times cheaper. Now, as I was concluding my session, I was going through Birarung Ma, which is a massive park. Uh, just out of my peripheral vision, I captured this little guy shooting at 6400 ISO 180th of a second f1.8 so it does show that you can push these ISOs and still get quite compelling results to be honest I think that's a pretty good result considering that's a fox in the dark and that is just the light from my bike illuminating very happy to be able to achieve this wildlife photography with a zfc and a 50 mil 1.8 aps-c lens that's pretty cool in the dark very small amount of light then just looking back at the city a bit of a cityscape here iso 800 150th f 1.8 you know, you can mess with that as much as you want. Ultimately, I think what I'm seeing here with this lens is this. If you want an absolutely ridiculously affordable lens to take and travel with you or street or just have in your pocket at all times, or this is what your budget permits, it's delivering. It's delivering results in both sunlight, full sunlight. We saw full sunlight. We've seen twilight. And now we are seeing a big city at night and it is possible to still get reasonable captures like good captures i think this is a pretty good capture considering all of the technology we're using here and we're doing it handheld again iso 800 150th of a second f 1.8 i reckon a 50th of a second you're pretty good if you've got stable hands to get sharp images to anything below that it starts to get difficult again there is no stabilization in either camera or lens Alrighty, well that is the YN50 f1.8 for Z mount. The price is right. If you're looking for something like this, it's hard to beat. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for watching this episode. This is a super duper affordable option for, I think, mostly APS-C shooters, whether you're on your Z30, your Z50, or your ZFC. Just such a fantastic entry-level lens, which will get you going. Of course, it's not on the level of other lenses, S-Class lenses, and really most of the Nikon lenses, but of course they are more expensive. And I suppose the biggest problem that I've seen with this lens is the green and purple fringing. So just keep all of that in mind. Check out my merch. This is my I'm a little bit vintage t-shirt. You can get it in the links below. There are t-shirts, there are hats, there are bags. There's all sorts of things. Check it out. This is actually my merch created, designed by me. This stuff is actually made in America and sent directly to you by a third party. So you can choose it in whatever size, shape and color that you like. And a small percentage comes back to me because I created the design. Really helps to keep this channel going. Alrighty. It's been so good to see you, and please do let me know in the comments below what do you think of the YN 50mm 1.8. Alrighty. It's been so good to see you, and if this is your first time here, I would love to see you again, so please do subscribe, please share, and please like. Alright, bye for now.